welcome to Cool Animals. This YouTube channel is specifically created by me for people like you. Yes, we're going to discuss animals, we're going to go out, I'm going to go with game rangers, we're going to see exotic pets, wildlife, we're even going to see some dangerous animals, um, some rattlesnakes. Um, there's loads I've got planned for this for this channel. Now I'm going to try every week to send you a um, a program, and um, like I said, it all depends on on the subscribers that I get for this. If I can actually manage to 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 go forward with this, um, and a bit about myself. My name is Etienne Muller. I'm an actor. I'm from the Republic of South Africa. I moved here to sunny California in the USA. And I'm, I've been based here now for almost two years. Now, the plan for this channel is to educate people on animals. Um, I will be going out to Carolyn, a dear friend of mine. She runs um, the Sunshine Haven Rescue Facility, where people bring all, any animal in distress, animal, people even find them next to the road. You just put them in your car, you take them to Carolyn, and she will try her best to relocate them, to get them up to the stage where she can relocate them. She even already said that she's going to invite me, and we're going to see a relocation where she actually sets an animal free into the wild. So that's very exciting. And in today's program, we're actually going to see um, some animals that she's got there. So um, I can't wait. And... Without further ado, let's start our first program. Thank you. In today's episode, I'm basically going to go over to Carolyn. Now, Carolyn is a dear friend of mine, and she's one of those special people that dedicated her life to saving animals. Amazing woman. You'll see she's so passionate about it, and um, she's an absolute professional. She specializes in it, in saving animals. Um, and she actually said, I can come over. She's got some interesting animals you want to show me so um, let's go and see what she's got uh, it's about a, I'd say a 15 to 20 minute drive I guess from where I'm at and uh, then I'll uh, introduce you to her and then you can meet Carolyn so let's go <laughs> Okay, I'm so excited. We just arrived here at Sunshine Haven Wildlife uh, Rescue and I want to introduce you to Caroline. Caroline is, she knows we are, we are on our way, so she is waiting for me. Um, and let's go and meet her and let's see what amazing animal we've got today. Ah, here she is. Hey, hey hi, Etienne. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Good nice you. to be with you. Hi. Hey. Guys, right, so this to... is Carolyn that I told you about. She dedicates her life to rescuing animals. What an amazing person. Um, I just want to thank you on behalf, I'm sure, all the people watching. Really, it's an amazing job that you do. And um, take off my glasses. Um, and I'm sure that in the future, you're going to see a lot of Carolyn. She's, she's always has very interesting animals that she can show us. And uh, if we're lucky, she might uh, invite us to a release one day to see how one of the, the rescue animals gets released back into the wild, which is amazing to get that opportunity to actually help an animal to get to that stage where you can release them in the wild. That, that must be such an amazing feeling. <laughs> it's the reason why we do it, you know. Uh -huh. At that moment of release is magical. Because well, you, you know that you have been released as well <laughs> from caring from them. So it's a double release. Well, Carolyn, um, I want you to tell us a bit more about yourself. I don't know if you want to go inside. We can do it here. You want yeah. to tell us more about when did it start? Uh, how did Sunshine Haven start? And where did your love for rescuing animals how, how, how did that come to? Because not everybody's got a stomach for it. Because sometimes you get animals... Um, it's a shame they get they get run over by vehicles and then the people literally have to bring it to Carolyn and Carolyn will help them on the phone if they call, if they call her and then you'll tell them 
exactly what to do and how to how to handle the animal and bring them to you am, correct. I, am I correct correct all right so um you will notice i have this cute speech impediment called a foreign accent <laughs> you have one of those i too. have one too from south africa you are from from, from quebec canada so i'm french wow. canadian from the uh, a little town up north of quebec called beauport it means nice part it's one of the oldest town in north america so uh, when the french first gained territory in North America, they established that uh, colony in Bhopal, where I'm from. So it's a very, very old city with a lot <laughs> of history, but it's also very cold. And it's also in the forest and it has a lot of Aww. wildlife, as you can imagine, from the nature of Canada being Canada is just a lot, a lot, a lot of wildlife. So yeah. There's not a lot of things to do when there's 10, 12 feet high of snow, eight months a year. So as a habit, when I was a child, I would look on the side of the road for animals that have been hit by cars. I know ah. it sounds creepy. Just give me a second. I'm getting that. So I would bring those animals back, even though they were deceased. I would still bring them back because I wanted to know how they were made, how they look yes. like, what they are. So actually, I didn't care. It's frozen. It was kind of clean. You know, it's not as bad as you think. Yeah. And so I'm eight years old. And there's a big wood chuck called so a marmot. So it started, yeah. I'm hmm. eight years Look old, and I find a big wood chuck on the side of the road, and it's still alive. Oh my gosh, it's alive! So it's winter, mind you. I took my jacket out, my coat out, and I wrapped the animal, and I walked back home. Oh wow! And then I hid the animal in my father's tool shed. Is what I did. So, because, you know, I don't think my parents would have agreed with me bringing a woodchuck home. <laughs> and so I kept traveling from the tool shed to the house to get water, to get toilet paper, to absorb the blood. I was trying to treat this animal with no oh, knowledge. Wow. I'm eight years old. And my mom noticed something was up. Why is she going like this in the shed and back in the house? So my mom went to check and then she saw. And I'm like, mom, it's still alive. I found it on the side of the road. I've been giving it water. Oh, and she wow. said, it's okay to die, honey, but it's not okay to die thirsty. Let me help you. Oh, that's so okay. I thought that's she good. would be nice mad. Story. She actually started helping me. And the poor animal died anyway within the hour of coming home. But, but I at least she didn't die alone next to the road. Correct. So. I understood that it's okay to die, but we don't die thirsty or in pain. Mm. Or So here we are a wildlife hospital, and I provide the veterinary care on wildlife. Um, it's the type of veterinary care that pretty much anyone could give on their own pet, like stopping bleeding, stitching, you know. Yeah. Um, something that doesn't require you to be a DMV license, meaning a full-blown vet. However, the wildlife rehabber is very similar to a vet without being a vet. Yeah. The limit of what we do here is I don't cut the skin of a live animal to cause us to, to make a surgery, let's say. Yeah. Uh, I don't prescribe pills and I don't charge for my services. So those yes. three things that are different from being a full blown. And you vet. Know, that is such an important point where you you can always call and you can bring in the animal at no charge. I mean, um, you are also helping um, by bringing the animal in. Yeah. Um, so you are also helping to save the animal's life and yeah. there's no charge and she does it for free. Yeah. Um, Carolyn, from, from I know of you for a while now, um, through my wife, uh, Sheila, and um, she does this for, for free. It, is, it, it works on donations for Sunshine Heaven. So um yeah please if anything happens you can always and and there will be details as well during the show i will put a link up there for donations and i'll also put a, a a link at the end with all the um the details and uh, the contact numbers and things that you need for if you find something here in riverside california um you can always give carolyn a, a, a ring mm -hmm. and you you call me and i give you instruction on how to either catch the animal or or to get here, or how to provide the temporary care until you can transport to us. Awesome. Well, that's a, that's a interesting. So, how did you start Sunshine Haven then? How did that come to you? Interesting. I moved in with the palm trees because I got tired of the snow. 
I'm serious. Why am I here? <laughs> the fantastic Palm weather. Trees, let me I just swear. let me just remind the people. I mean, just look at that. Look at the blue sky there. That's that's amazing. The palm trees. Yeah. I moved there. Be <laughs> I moved there because of the palm trees, and then now that I establish myself here, um, talking with people, they just know I know about wildlife. They just know, you know, because of the nature of where I'm from. Uh, wildlife is a natural occurrence where I'm from. And so people start bringing me little animals that needed help and it start growing and it start growing, you know. And now we take in about 2,000 animals every year. Wow. Wow. It's wow. a lot of animals. That's a lot of animals. Mm -hmm. And it's everything. You Every day, you just don't know what's going to come in. No, it's always a new day. It's always different. We see patterns among species and injuries, but however... It's always new. It's always different. Yeah, it can be raccoons. It can be hawks. She even had an eagle. Um, snakes. I've seen some snakes here as well. Um, yeah, lots of snakes actually. Yeah, they get bit by dogs or they get brought in the house by the cat. If mm. you have a cat, keep it indoors. He might bring you little snakes in the house. So can I ask you then for today, if um, perhaps we can discuss an animal that you've got here, interesting animal, and um, also tell the people the procedure if you find an animal in distress, a wild animal that needs to come in, and uh, how to go about it, um, up okay. to the point where they hand it over to you. Oh, yeah. And then perhaps we can uh, have a bit of a chat on how the specific animal, how you would treat it, and what is the procedure. Um, well, let's forward. do it right yeah. now. I'd like to introduce you to an animal that you guys probably don't see often in South Africa, and it's called the American skunk. We don't have those. <laughs> they can be stinky. So there's a way to approach a skunk. Okay, so before we even approach the skunk, I'm going to explain ways to approach a skunk. Okay, so. If you point your feet towards the animal, that's very aggressive for an animal. So you don't want to point your feet at the animal. Like, let's see the animal. I'm pointing my feet at him. I'm engaging. Any animal is going to be upset with you if you do that. So you don't want to do that. You want to approach sideways like I'm doing now. See how my feet are not pointing yes. at you? I'm, a point, I'm, I'm sideways now to you. And I will not make eye contact and lock the contact because predators do that. We're predators. How do I know that? See, my eyes are in front of my face. That's interesting. That's a predator. If you are a prey, your eyes are on the side, like the rabbit, the yeah. deer, you know, the goat, for example. So herbivores, mostly their eyes are on the side of the head. They're a prey. And predators have eyes in the front. So look at us. We have eyes in the front, right? Another thing I won't do if I'm going to approach a skunk, because I don't want to get sprayed, okay, is smile with teeth. Don't do that. Don't do it. Okay? You might smile. No teeth. Because for animals, if you show teeth, ah. they don't think it's a smile. They're not humans. They, that's for humans. You want to eat them. That's what they think. They think <laughs> you're showing teeth. You're being aggressive. So imagine I approach you and I point my feet at you. I'm locking eyesight and I'm smiling at you. You're going to get it. You're gonna get sprayed. Don't do it. Oh wow! So there's a way to do things. Okay. Well, so there you go. Do... Like I was explaining. Okay, if you want to approach where a skunk is, you know there's a skunk. You want to not point your feet at it, and you want to approach sideways, like I'm doing now. Okay. So you approach sideways, like a crab, if you wish, and see how I'm talking the entire time. This animal knows I'm here because it can hear my voice. Right now, my tone of voice is kind of not aggressive, not angry, and this animal can feel that too. So it's going to help if you keep a tone of voice around a skunk that's kind of non-aggressive, okay? So now I'm going to show you, Miss here was hit by a car, and she was brought to us by Upland Animal Control in California. And here is this little guy here. He's moved to the side. Hello. Hi. See, so in no way am I locking eyes with it. In no way am I pointing my feet at it. And in no way am I smiling with teeth when I look at it. As a result, this animal is not going to spray me, ever. See, skunk have a reserve in their glands of that spray that's very smelly. And they want to conserve that, okay? It's not something that they want to use here, left and right. Uh, it's something they actually calculate 
when they're going to use it and they also calculate how much of it they will use they can spray up to 20 feet so wow that's far 20 feet so remember that the only reason i can stand a few feet away like this and she shows no aggression is because i'm not engaging with my eyes i'm not smiling at it with teeth and my feet are not pointing at it so this animal absolutely knows i'm not there to engage for an attack when you attack your feet engage whatever it is that you're attacking so and this is how here at the wildlife hospital i can actually handle skunks and not get sprayed i can replenish water food no problem i won't get sprayed okay now skunk here in california and also the rest of the u.s uh, up to canada they're a vector for a terrible disease called rabies so if you ever see one of those beautiful creatures circling in circle in your yard or acting weird you know what i want you to call animal control don't worry about animal control it's not true that they kill everything okay so people need to understand animal control don't do that what they do is they're trained to capture this animal safely and bring it to me and because we are the first eyes on the disease that this animal could have see when this animal wants to threaten for spraying what they're gonna do is see the front the front uh, they will start tapping like this and then they actually go on their front feet with their feet up and now you know you might get it okay so see there's a whole ritual before they actually use that very precious juice found in their gland that's so smelly <laughs> for real the, it's, it takes for them up to a week to 10 days to replenish that fluid. So it's not something you want to throw at everything. So they're good in a way at problem solving, meaning they can assess the level of threat, the threat they're receiving, and if it's worth using the juice or not. So that's good to know, you know. She's not too happy we're here. She yeah, I can see she's tapping. She's mm -hmm. warning she's us. She's not too happy. But That's... it's amazing that um, the misconception where if they see you, they just spray. She's given us so many warnings now already and she hasn't sprayed at all. Oh, well, she won't. She won't spray because I'm not engaging. I'm not engaging her. Not looking at her, not smiling with teeth. My feet are not towards her. Uh, even when I come in with food and water, I have to open the cage, put my hand in there. She will tap a little more, but she still doesn't spray me. Why? Because I perform this uh, 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 non-verbal uh, language that yes. animals understand. All animals understand what I just explained to you. I approach raptors the same way. I approach any wildlife that way. And guess who doesn't really get bit or sprayed? Yeah, that's right. So if you do this, you're okay. Carolyn's going to show us a raven now, but she just told me an interesting fact that I didn't know about skunks. She said they're born with the ability to spray. Can you, can you tell us about that? That's correct. So any uh, little newborn baby skunk is born with full, full glands. So if you startle them, they will spray you. So never startle, especially a baby skunk, little baby skunks. They don't control it well yet, you know, and you're going to get it. Each time I have been sprayed was by little babies, and it's because I startled them. So the voice talking first before you approach them, so they know you're there. Because if I just lift up the sheet like this, whoa, you know, it, it freaks them out. But, you know, um, if you let them know you're there with a gentle voice first, even the small babies, you're going to be okay. But don't startle a baby skunk. <laughs> Well, thank you. Um, shall we move on to the raven? Yeah. Let's go inside here and yeah. see what we've got. Exciting. Yeah. And so we have Oscar here. Hi. <clears throat> that is Oscar over there. And Oscar talks. Oh. I hope he talks for us today. But he says Oscar and he says hello. And he barks like a chihuahua because um, I have my dogs, my personal dogs are chihuahuas. So he's just imitating um, their speech is very interesting. So um, Oscar is a raven. Ravens are not like crows. It's a very different species altogether. People confuse them. So I'm going to make it uh, very easy for you to always know now. 
the crow is a smaller built of bird. It's kind of a small bird. The raven is large. It's the size of a chicken. So that's big for a bird if you're the size it is of a, a big chicken. Bird, yeah. Correct. It's a big bird. Now, if you can notice the beak, the beak is pointy. And the beak being pointy tells you he's a meat eater. Okay, not ah. a raptor, but a meat eater. What's the difference between a bird who eats meat and a raptor? Very easy. The raptor, by definition, catches his food with its feet. And it's not what the raven does. The raven is a scavenger. So he has very, very strong uh, digestive acid and enzyme in there that he can actually eat carrion and not get sick from it. You and I would die from it. We'd get, I don't know, listeria at least, right? <laughs> um, but the, the raven doesn't get sick from eating putrid carcasses. That's why you see them on the side of the road. And most of the time when they come to me is because they were hit by a car because they were actually eating carrion on the side of the road, okay? So um, he is not releasable <laughs> because the wing was too injured. So the, here, the, not the requirement, but the recommendation. It's a recommendation. The recommendation of my department is if the animal is not rehabable, you cannot rehab it and you cannot release it, we must humanely put them down. However, he has a job with me. And what I do with Oscar is, he turns out he's a fantastic dad, okay? So ravens, both mom and dad take care of the babies, and they're very, very good parents. So when ah. I receive orphan babies that are little baby raven, I hand feed them, and then I place the baby with Oscar, and Oscar takes over the care for me, he grooms them, and he loves them, and when I come to get the baby <laughs> to feed it, now he fights me, Ooh. you know, they're not very nice. Um, He's been with us uh, a little while now, and um, he's never taken to me. So this bird absolutely hates us, okay? <laughs> but uh, he's not afraid of us, as you can see. He's right here. See, now he knows I can pet his beak. Because we see them as black, but the truth is they're not actually black. Oh. Mm -hmm. They have an iridescence. To them so if i take this bird put it under the sun you'll see purples and greens a bit like a pigeon you know you'll see all kinds of colors coming out of him and birds other birds they don't see him black they see all those colors interesting so the truth is ravens are not black they're, they're black to us human <laughs> they are extremely colorful if you apply the spectrum of those colors you know infrareds and ultraviolet that we don't really see Birds see that. Wow. And me, I know for a fact, when we take him for a little walk under the sun, all the colors now you ah. can see. So they look black. They're not really black. There's an iridescence to them. It's just that we cannot perceive it. What have we here, Carolyn? This is the little Eurasian colored dove. Um, they're non-native invasive in California, so they don't have a federal protection. And she was attacked by a cat. And besides a broken wing, she has this little broken oh, leg here. Sure. But it's okay. That's why she's given another leg. This leg cannot be fixed. Doesn't matter. She's in good spirit. She wants to live. So I have Mimi Dove here. It's who's Mimi also non-releasable. And I use her as a foster mom. So she's been helping me with countless of little baby doves like this that we raise. This one won't be able to be released. It's okay. When I get other babies, she can become also a foster mom. Just like little Mimi here. <laughs> exactly. So oh, Mimi's cute. staying with us. So we have a few individuals that are with us permanently. And the reason why is so, um, so that they can help me with the smaller wildlife. And these, see, that's a feeding behavior. When they so want she to wants be fed, to. She wants to be fed. She wants to be fed, so she shakes her wings like this. That's what they do. Uh, so this is what I use uh, Etienne to feed the babies. See, this is the brain uh, I use. 
this is probably the best on the market no we were not paid by the company to say this it's yes. true <laughs> this is a true fact this is the best we have okay and this is why i use this guy okay so um carolyn's got the food prepared here she's going to show us the feeding process, there you can see, mm, yum yum. Nice mush, you know. So now I'm gonna show you that feeding the columbiform, the doves, the pigeons, okay, is a different technique than feeding the regular songbirds with a syringe down the crop. We don't do that for those. It's a different beak, different bird, and I have to make them believe they're feeding from mom's throat directly. Watch this, watch this. Um, let me feel the crop. Oh yeah, it's getting there. Look, she's open. She's so cute. She's so hungry. Mimi, you're always hungry. <laughs> you always look like I've never fed you ever. Wow. I know. Look, she's going at okay, this. Okay, so you just push the cup now and it basically comes up to the... Exactly. To the but what I want to show you now is the whole crop is this whole section from here to there. Now it's full of food. Look at that. It's so full. So full, your neck is stuck in in your chest. It's a full crop. It's a good bay. I know. We'll rinse you up. Yeah, we'll wash you off. So it's messy. <laughs> it's messy, but it's worth it. And she's got a full stomach there. Oh, it's full. Oh, yeah, this crop now is huge. And now she's going to sleep it off. Until next feeding. So I do that every six hours for pigeons and wow. doves because the crop is so big. But the songbirds that we do with the syringe down the crop, you have to do that every half hour. Very demanding. Super demanding. The hummingbirds every 10 minutes. Are you kidding me? I have a, a special shirt with pockets to keep the baby hummingbirds. So I can do it every 10 minutes. It's how Wow. It's so you literally have them in a pocket mm -hmm. and then every 10 minutes you've got yep. to feed them. That's... Yeah, yeah. And that's how we're successful for them, you know. Um, there's not that much literature about wildlife rehab out there. I wish there were more. So a lot of this came through the years of trial and error, what works best, you know. And so far, um, I've had it now down to a science where we're very successful. With all the species we receive and pretty much any type of injuries because we've seen it and dealt with it it's that simple so the technique of the cup see all that cup i had made it's all here now she ate it all so now i'm going to put her with the foster mom because the foster mom is going to show her how to behave like a dove and this is why i need foster animals so the ones that can never be released they can help me. Here, go back with the little bebe. Here, stay with the bebe. Watch for your little feet. I have to close the door, <laughs> Mimi. Here you go. Well, we've um, we've reached the end of today's uh, today's program, and I would really like to take this this moment to thank you for um, inviting us Absolutely. into your world. You're <laughs> Very exciting world, but it's a twenty-four hour standby. Yes job that you've got um yes. so it's definitely not uh, not for the faint-hearted of the things that you see as well there's also a there's also a messy side to things here and there's also a, a sad side because not all animals make it it all depends on the state they're in when they bring them in and you can only do so much i guess as well um but i think that's where your passion for animals your love and your dedication towards animals comes through definitely and it shows in what you do and as you can see today just the way that you talk to your animals you've got a soft you 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 like animals more than humans <laughs> i do i'm a true misanthropist and it makes me a better wildlife rehabilitator that's true so um yeah this is definitely a 24-hour standby job um like like uh, like Carolyn said earlier as well, um, she just don't know when someone's going to pop in with the, with the animal. She don't know what kind of animal she's going to get, and um, that's where her vast experience in throughout all these years that you've been doing this as well. That's where that comes to the front in um, helping you with uh, dealing with this all these different cases that you get on animals. Mm -hmm. I think a very interesting show it's in in the future would be the animal cruelty case we've received and that's directly linked to people being cruel to wildlife yeah and i think that in the future we could do something just about that 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. And hopefully this program will also, for the people watching, for all the the youngsters out there, um, if you see, even if it's a tiny little bird and you think you can help it, um, just find out where you can take it. Um, What rescue facility for wildlife um, is closest to you in the area where you live? doesn't matter where on this planet. There's always a a sanctuary for wild animals that, that you can take them in. And um, I think uh, that's, the, that's the right thing to do as well. Um, sometimes you might think that the animal can't be, can't, there's no chance that you can save it. But there's, there's always a chance on, on a second life for, for the poor little, little mm-hmm. animals. As so. long as you choose a wildlife rehabber who's licensed with either the, your state or your province or your county, you know, or uh, federally uh, license you want to choose a wildlife rehabber that is legally in possession of its license and the reason why is it makes a difference in the type of care this animal will receive so you want to have somebody who's knowledgeable and somebody who is approved by uh, the local government to do what they do you know yeah. it matters otherwise it's illegal to rehab wildlife without a license and here in California if you do that it's a five thousand dollar fine it's not pretty and they take this very very seriously so you can go on the fish and wildlife uh, California uh, website you know and they list there all the wildlife we have facilities that are licensed with the state and you choose the one that's closest to where you found the animal well thank you so much thanks everyone really You're welcome. appreciate it see you soon and see you soon and um yeah, um, we're going to see a lot more of Carolyn and uh, loads more exciting animals. And every time we get a different animal in, Carolyn already told me she's more than willing to go into detail on the specific animal so that we can learn more about animals around us and how to handle animals, um, how to handle if you see them and you see them in distress. And um, she will always, the specific animal that we deal with, you will tell us what to do in that specific scenario if we if we find something like that. I huh? certainly will. Thanks, Thanks, village. And don't forget, uh, I'm going to bring up the link now as well, right at the end, where um, you can donate um, towards uh, towards your rescue. Yes, we're five hundred one C three nonprofit registered with the IRS. We're a true nonprofit charitable organization. And we welcome donations and send out tax deduction receipt. Those are always useful. Hey, okay. Well, that's the end of today's program. And thanks for for tuning in and watching. And um, every week, something interesting, something new. And you just never know what we're going to get next. So please remember to subscribe. And see you next time.